Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Permobile Academy webinar series. My name is Brenly Mogul Rotman, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar Maintaining Your Ride, Cushion, and Wheelchair Care and Maintenance. In this current COVID 19 world, our hearts go out to all those affected and on the front lines, including many of the healthcare and medical equipment professionals on the call today. Permobile remains at your service and committed to supporting our customers, colleagues, and consumers through these uncertain times. The webinar today is co-sponsored by the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, the Permobile Foundation, and the Permobile Academy. When you logged into the webinar, you were automatically muted upon entry to keep the noise down for everyone. If you have any questions or comments as we proceed live, you can type them into the question chat box on your GoToWebinar panel. We will leave time for questions at the end of the webinar, and if we don't get to your questions live, we will get back to you via email afterwards. In the GoToWebinar panel, there's also a Handouts tab. This is where you can fun, find today's handouts that you can download during the live event. We do not have professional CEU or continuing education unit credits for this webinar. However, for live event attendees, an email with a link to fill out a certificate of attendance will be emailed once this webinar is closed. So to get started today, we're gonna to start with a quick poll just to see who is in attendance today. So please, once you see the poll, if you can, if it's safe to do so, please answer the questions. So we're asking who you are, who's joining us today, um, are you an individual or a consumer? Are you a PT, OT, or another type of clinician? Are you an ATP, RTS, or vendor-related person? Or are you a family member of an individual with a mobility impairment? So, so far we've got about 50% clinicians, 30% vendor-related, about 17% individual, individuals and consumers, we do still have a lot of people signing on, so that probably will change, and we do have 5% family members. So we have a little bit of everything. Thank you for your responses. Appreciate that. I'm gonna close out this poll. All right, so I'm going to uh, turn this over to our presenters, and I'm happy to introduce to you Trisha and Doug Garvin, and Trish and Doug will introduce themselves and tell you who they are. So Trish, it is all yours. Great, Brinley, thank you so much. We're uh, really, really excited to be with you and to, to do this webinar today. Uh, this is us, um, Doug and I are married. Uh, I think that's, uh, we're a married couple at Permobile. There's a couple couples within the organization and uh, I am a regional clinical education manager for the company, and I'll let Doug introduce himself. Yeah, I'm Doug Garvin, and uh, I'm the product design manager for uh, Permobile for the Tie Light uh, manual wheelchair side. Uh, I'm uh, by degree, I'm an industrial designer. Uh, I've been designing chairs in the industry for 28 years, and uh, was you know, born in Ohio, went to school at Kent State. Um, first job out of school took me to St. Louis, Missouri. This was just a fun thing to show all the different places I've been. Um, my next job took me out to Santa Cruz, California. Then my next job took me to Boulder, Colorado. And then I was back to Laguna Niguel, California. And then I was back to Denver, Colorado. Then I was uh, over in Switzerland for a two year time period. Uh, came back, uh, moved to Austin, Texas for my next job, and then from there ended up in uh, Pasco, Washington for Tie Light, where I've been uh, working for the past 10 years, or yeah, not living, but working there for the past 10 years. Yeah, so uh, Doug was really busy, and uh, I'm from Texas, and I stayed in Texas. I am a physical therapist. I worked in an inpatient rehab hospital and specialized in spinal cord injury. Also um, worked in a seating clinic there as well. So um, 
Well, Doug was moving all around. I was uh, in Texas, but then we both went to um, ISS in Orlando one year. We met, we married, we moved to Washington, and now we're really happy to be in Tennessee. Uh, so we built a house. I know it's a really tiny picture, but I thought that was kind of fun just to tell a little bit about our stories and um, indeed uh, coming from Ty Light, Doug did, and I came from Rojo. Um, and so now we're in Tennessee with Permobile um, directly. And um, this slide, we just wanted to show, you know, some of the things that we take care of uh, in our daily lives. You know, we maintain our cars, our homes. These are all things that are, you know, important. And just as important, if not more so, should be your uh, your wheelchair, or, you know, your cushions and all the, uh, it's a high performance uh, piece of equipment that needs to be maintained and upkept. Thank you. So we're going to start, of course, with kind of an overarching statement, which you probably expected, um, that you really need to uh, refer to your owner's manual, um, uh, specific to whatever pieces of equipment that you're using, because there's no way I could know all of the specifics today. Um, they are great resources, so I do want to um, reiterate that there is a lot of um, uh, good information in there that you should um look into if you don't have a copy of your owner's manual anymore or you're curious almost all of them are online uh, if you don't have the means to get online or you can't find it online i'm sure that you could call uh, any manufacturer and they would be able to get you one um, somehow so the first topic and the first section that we want to talk about is um, cushion care and um, there's really there's really a couple of definitions that we start with first um, that I took straight from the um, dictionary uh, that I've credited here online. Um, but cleaning is the first step. So um, before you do any of this, um, it's always, of course, important to wear the appropriate PPE, depending on what chemicals and or cleaners you may be working with. So, of course, um, do that. But cleaning is very familiar to us. It's something that we know. Essentially, it's just um, freeing the object from dirt or pollution. Uh, so that's cleaning, you know, disinfecting is actually a second and separate process. So a lot of times we talk about it like it's all one thing, but truly it isn't. Um, so I think it's important to uh, reiterate here that it is, oops, sorry, a, a separate process. So when you go to disinfect something after it's been cleaned, this is when you can, um, free the object from infection and or potentially harmful uh, microorganisms, viruses, etc. So uh, like Brindley mentioned, in light of what's going on in the world right now with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, I do want to include a resource for uh, everybody online. Even if you're not in the United States, you can still access this. Uh, your country uh, may also, I'm um, actually quite positive. It also has a similar resource that you can go to, but the EPA within the United States does have a list of approved cleaners and disinfectants, I should say, um, specific to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we're in. Uh, I put this up for two reasons. One, to give you the website if you didn't already know it. Um, you could also just do a quick Google search for EPA approved cleaners and, and disinfectants. But I do want to show the highlighted boxes I have here. The first on the top, there are many different cleaners and they are come in different forms. So this will help you to understand, is it a liquid? Is it a wipe? Is it, um, you know, do I need to dilute it? Can I use it full strength, et cetera? So it gives you information like that. It also tells you how long it needs to stay on the product. This is an important, um, a piece here because uh, just in this uh, example that we have here the very bottom um, chemical here needs to stay in contact with the product for 10 minutes so keeping something wet for 10 minutes might actually be difficult doing something um, like the cleaners above it that only require 30 seconds may be more doable depending on um, what you're cleaning and where you're cleaning it so just wanted to sort of bring that to your attention and also the fact that this is just a quick little sample of one uh, a part of page one of 39 pages so this is something that we put in as the handout on the uh, in the tab that you can download straight from this webinar now 
Um, it, I got it straight off the internet. It was current as of last night. So uh, just, just something that uh, I wanted to bring to light here. So specifically when we go looking at um, cleaning and then disinfecting, um, almost everything has a cover. Uh, these are cleaning instructions for ROHO uh, covers specifically. And of course, consult the instruction manual in whatever um, product you're using, but the instructions um, will likely be similar. First step, of course, is to remove the cushion from the cover. Um, if you do have uh, hook and loop fasteners attached, take those off the cover before uh, the next step when you go to launder so that you don't cause any fabric damage. So then after you have the cover um, removed, you can uh, machine wash it on a gentle cycle in cold water with mild detergent, or you can wash it in hand, uh, by hand with a neutral uh, detergent as well, and then tumble dry on low or hang it to dry. So pretty standard uh, laundry instructions here. For disinfecting the Rojo cover, you're going to do it just a little bit differently. Of course, you're going to, um, after you've cleaned it, machine wash on the gentle cycle in hot water with your detergent or hand wash in warm water with a um, bleach mixture. So nine parts water to one part bleach. After that, you can rinse it with fresh water and dry it, either tumble dry or hang to dry. For cleaning the cushion specifically, of course, once the, the cover's already off, so you want to close the valve, begin by just rinsing and removing anything between the cushion cells. As you can see on the uh, last picture here, I uh, will get our uh, pointer up. So this picture, um, you can, if there is something that is uh, dried or um, solid on the cushion, before you go to pull those apart, you do want to um, moisten the cushion, get it uh, wet so that you can pull it apart um, more easily and so that you don't damage the cells. So next step, after the uh, valve is closed, you're going to put it in a put the product in a large sink. It could be in the shower, it could be a tub. So some way that you could uh, submerge it or get it fully wet with water. Hand wash the cushion with a mild detergent. Uh, you can use a brush, a sponge, a washcloth to gently scrub between the, cush the cushion surfaces. With the Rojo, you want to go in both directions between the cells, so up and down and side to side to get between all of them. Rinse it with water and then hang to dry. So disinfecting the cushion is going to be a very similar process, but this time instead of a mild detergent, again, um, you can use that bleach solution, one part bleach to nine parts water. You can also use most germicidal disinfectants for Rojo products, which is um, very uh, fortunate, I guess. And again, after you've disinfected, you want to rinse it with water and hang the cushion to dry. Like we just mentioned with the uh, virus and the uh, solutions that are going on, or I should say the, um, the worries of cleaning and disinfecting products, it is important um, that we do do both uh, clean and disinfect our products. So once the cushion is clean, after it's dry, replace the cushion cover. Uh, Doug had taught me actually a really great tip about how putting your Rojo cushion back into the into the cover, and that's to put it on upside down, if that makes sense. So you want to flip it to where the cells are facing down towards your lap or uh, the bed or wherever you're sitting, and you want and then uh, slide it into the cover that way. So with of course the cover right side up facing down also. So just a, a little trick there. And then um, place the cushion back in your wheelchair and, of course, follow all the um, setup guides uh, for setting up the cushion if it wasn't previously set for you. So hand washing foam products. So this could be the foam that came inside a headrest, a lateral, a back support, or a foam cushion. Uh, please do uh, seek out the manufacturer's recommendations most of the time soap is not recommended on the foam. So just a damp cloth on the foam. A lot of foams do have a, um, a wipeable or a moisture barrier type of um, cover. So that's helpful, but you are just going to um, wipe the foam cushion. And it's uh, worth noting that disinfection is actually not possible on a porous material like foam. Um, hence why the covers uh, can be even more important here. 
Disinfecting, cleaning and disinfecting all the other pieces of hardware um, in the seating solution are also important. Um, very similar steps. This could be the headrest hardware, the laterals, the thigh guides, the back shell itself. Um, so again, you want to clean, rinse, and disinfect uh, the product if necessary. So when we go to moving on to the wheelchairs themselves, Oh, actually, uh, I meant to uh, go back to the uh, cushion selection or cushion um, cleaning. We did put the handout in the uh, webinar uh, tab for you as well. Uh, the instructions that I went through on the Rojo cushion, as, uh, the directions there. So that is another resource for you. We have some videos on YouTube and we'll in the um, in the uh, emails that you receive after the webinar will also have some links for you to look at a, a very comprehensive cleaning um, video that goes through all the permobile range of products from uh, seating through uh, manual and power and smart drive uh, wheelchair products as well. So that will be coming. So getting back to uh, cleaning your wheelchair itself, again, care and maintenance, a first step is cleaning. So very similar process. You want to, um, with a damp um, rag and a mild detergent, you want to rinse it and you want to uh, clean and wipe, uh, rinse and wipe dry and then let the products air dry. So cleaning, specifically when we look at power wheelchairs, um, a mild detergent on a damp rag is very important. Uh, it's worth noting too that you should not use flowing water such as a garden hose or a bucket of water, um, something like that. It's, it, it may sound silly, but it is a question that we've answered many times. So again, uh, hand washing the powered wheelchair is very important. And why it's important is because it can get quite dirty. Um, before you go to clean a product, you wanna ensure that the power is off um, while you're, uh, while you're wiping or managing, cleaning any of the electronic uh, components such as the drive control, et cetera, you may even um, flip the breaker, um, the circuit, so that there's no risk of power at all. Um, one of the most dirty places on the, the power chair besides the joystick and the joystick receiver can be the foot plate. Some people find it helpful to use a foaming type of cleanser to sort of saturate the foot plate um, where the grippy tape is so that you can really clean within there. You can use a bristle brush to scrub that out. Um, canned air has been used or even an air compressor can be helpful for removing that, um, those dirt and crumbs as well, in addition to using it for drying the, the products as well. Although we don't recommend taking your uh, covers or shrouds off the wheelchairs, you can see this is the same wheelchair. They get quite dirty underneath, depending on your lifestyle and where you go and um, how dusty it is where you live. So uh, we want to make sure that um, that you are aware of how just just how dirty the wheelchair can get. Again, very important that you do not use any type of um, running water on the base of the chair, and you can you can appreciate why all of the components uh, for the chair are, that would be sensitive to water are protected by that shroud. You may be tempted to um, to wipe the movable components and to look and see what uh, to maybe remove that lubricant, but it's very important that that's a that's an, a necessary uh, piece of the equipment to keep the um, mechanics of the chair working properly. So again, we don't want to remove all of that. If you do have squeaks or noises um, on the power wheelchair is when we recommend that you call your uh, wheelchair service provider. Uh, we do not recommend using WD-40 for uh, the squeaks, et cetera. And here I just, uh, maybe on a little bit more positive note, I'm a very optimistic person in general. I like to um, point out and highlight here that uh, you can have a really clean wheelchair. This is a wheelchair that's over two years old and it looks excellent because it's really been um, well maintained. It's been taken care of and cleaned so that you can um, you can have a really easy uh, easy to clean solution if you keep up with the, the routine cleaning. 
A part of that cleaning too, of course, should focus on the routinely touched parts of the wheelchair. So of course, the driver control unit switches, um, arm, uh, arm rests, push handles, et cetera. You want to pay special attention to these features. On the manual chair, it's no different. You wanna pay special attention to the parts you touch most often. This would be things like the um, hand rim, the wheel locks, the front frame of the wheelchair, if you put your hand there for transfers or when you're loading the chair into the car, et cetera. Um, it would also include armrests, push handles, different parts that uh, your family members may touch as well. So we want to look at uh, keeping all those pieces clean as well. If you are going to wipe down your chair, uh, your manual chair, uh, a soft cloth is plenty. You don't want to use something super abrasive or rough on a painted uh, frame because that could damage the frame, cause some scratches. Manual chairs can get pretty dirty also. So this is an example of a seat upholstery that um, I suspect this person had a long haired white dog. Uh, you can see a lot of um, hair gets in that Velcro on the seat. So this is something that can be um, pretty tough to clean, but I just actually, the same tool that you use on your pet may be very helpful in pulling that hair and fuzz and lint out of the seat upholstery uh, Velcro as well. So something to be aware of. And this is, um, this is a pretty gross picture. But uh, this is also something that you wanna be aware of on the manual chairs is all the dirt and the grit and grime that can happen on the um, axles, the rear wheel axle here. Um, so again, the recommendation would be to first clean it with a soft cloth and get all of the dirt off. And then you want to uh, re-lubricate that axle with a silicone-based um, uh, uh, lubricant. So disinfecting, so that was cleaning the manual wheelchair. Disinfection is also important. Again, you're going to um, clean First, disinfect. Second, the disinfection process will be very similar now, but using one of these um, uh, approved disinfectant, um, such as uh, what is on that EPA list. So again, you're just going to spray a damp cloth, and then you're going to wipe and clean the um, cushion or the wheelchair afterwards. Wipe it, uh, rinse it with clean water, I should say. We want to, again, pay special attention to the parts that you are um, touching the most often. So this is all the joysticks, the push handles, switches, et cetera. Same thing for the manual wheelchair. We want to pay attention to those most frequently touched uh, pieces that we are disinfecting. And then a third definition that we want to bring up here for Main, or for wheelchairs specifically is the maintenance. So it's, in the, it's the next step. And maintenance is the, uh, the definition of maintenance is the act of maintaining, which is the state of being maintained, right? Um, it's, it's something that we want to keep in good working order. So cleaning and disinfecting is a part of the maintenance process. So, give my slide a second to catch up here. So when we look at power wheelchairs, we want to, what we need to do, we need to clean and wipe the products down often. While you're doing this is a perfect time to inspect for wear and tear and inspect that the products are working properly or that all the uh, components are working properly. Take the time to tighten hardware. This is just a, couple of examples here, such as the headrest or seating components like armrests, foot plates. Um, inspect the seating products, the cushions and the backs, and then also um, adjust as needed and be proactive with replacing these components. As um, many of you know, if you utilize a power wheelchair, 
that there's not a lot of self maintenance to do that really it's involving replacement of parts and being aware of when that needs to happen. A great example is battery maintenance. Um, here you can see on the screen is, it's coming, uh, is a, a sample from the Permobile user manual of a daily, weekly, monthly, and even yearly maintenance schedule that you can um, sort of set yourself up for. And like I just said, battery maintenance is a big part of that. So we suggest if you're going to use your wheelchair every day, that you charge your wheelchair every day. Um, even if you're only going a little bit, you should still let that um, chair charge overnight. Eight hours is best. Um, but we, we definitely recommend for battery health that you do charge the chair. I, Part of the um, schedule here is, is similar to what I just talked about, checking for um, safety of all the components, that they're working properly, that they are not, uh, they don't have any visible damage, such as cracks or tears in the upholstery, et cetera. So we want to keep a, keep a maintenance schedule. And why it's so important is because a couple of years ago, a group called Patients Like Me performed a study um, surveying power wheelchair users, and 56% um, of the folks surveyed had had parts on their wheelchair break or malfunction. It's probably not a surprise of the most common things um, reported was the battery, and this is why being aware of how your batteries are performing is important. And getting in contact with the service provider before you're in an emergency situation is important. If you notice that the batteries aren't holding a charge like they used to, make that phone call so that you can um, be proactive and help yourself before you get stuck or you have to carry a charger around with you all the time, et cetera. Um, but armrest, um, uh, seat actuators, the power components of the chair and such are what are reported as, um, as uh, malfunctioning or needing to be replaced most often. And why it's important is because a lot of people are stranded without mobility when something goes wrong. It's, it's happened and now they're stuck in bed in a worst case scenario. Something that I do want to highlight is uh, with Permobile specifically is Permobile has a, a platform called Connect that does um, house an end user application that can be very helpful in managing managing um, all of this service related and, and knowledge, I guess, of the, the health of the wheelchair. So what there is is installed in the base of the wheelchair is a um, special electronic unit called a Connect Me. So this hardware is mounted in the, underneath the chassis. Nothing needs to be done. It's already there. And by default, when the chair is shipped from uh, December of 27, uh, 2017 to now, of course, um, it's turned off by default because it's important that the end user, the uh, user of the wheelchair, actually accepts the uh, service. So once the end user gets the chair, they can activate it so that they can have access to the app and um, the My Permobile solution, which is an app that they can place on their phone and it will help them to help you to, um, to, to understand the health of the chair. There's continuous real time information. It's updating, uh, you know, all day, basically, reliable um, and permobile exclusive battery concept uh, information. So it's going to be able to tell you the percent of the battery that's left, not just a, you know, uh, a bars of red and yellow and green. And it's going to be able to estimate your battery travel range in hours and or distance. Um, so that's a very, very exciting development that this is um, just launched actually last month. Uh, or re, I should say uh, updated last month. The service has been out for a couple of years, but the, uh, these features are new. And of course, the integrated map that you can see on the screen in addition to seat activity tracking. So these are just features that are um, available on Permobile PowerChair specifically to help the power wheelchair user to understand um, the health of their equipment and how it's working. 
Uh, manual wheelchair users, though, are not excluded from um, the need for maintenance and uh, the adverse effects of, of poor maintenance or not maintaining a chair. 44.8% uh, of full-time wheelchair users performed at least one chair wheelchair repair in the last six months in this survey that was done several years ago. But um, again, I uh, my my gut. This is just my opinion here that these statistics are are probably relatively unchanged. Um, so this is a definitely something that we want to be aware of and understand. It's something that we need to educate everyone on so that everybody can be their own advocate and maintaining their own equipment. Yeah, so manual wheelchairs, this is something near and dear to my heart for sure. Uh, I don't think I mentioned earlier, I'm also a a chair user. I'm a T6 paraplegic and have been in a chair for 30 years now. So I have uh, seen and experienced many of these issues. And so talking from the heart, um, you know, when you clean manual chairs often, you know, often is, you know, every two or three weeks, I think is a good uh, time to give your chair a look over and see what's going on with it. Um, you know, inspect for the wear and tear. Titan hardware, if you uh, hear your chair starting to make sounds that it's not made before, you know, you hear something clunking or rattling or something, it's a really good indicator that something's loose. And so it's a good time to uh, stop and figure out what's causing that sound because it's not going to go away. Um, you know, adjust everything as needed. Uh, tire pressures are an important one I'm going to go over in another slide and uh, you know, for active replacement of things as they get really worn. So um, these are all uh, things that are covered in our owner's manual. And we just wanted to show uh, that these are things that are in the different, uh, you know, there's lots of different categories that are being covered. Rear tires. So, Check your air pressure in your tires. It's the single largest uh, performance robber of a chair. Um, if your chair starts feeling slow or sluggish, you know, it's probably because your tire pressure is low. This is a, a bad thing, not only from the performance perspective, but it increases the, uh, the wear on the tire. It's going to wear out quicker. And uh, it can also be a safety issue with the wheel locks uh, not functioning the way they're supposed to. Uh, look for wear patterns on your tires. They can be, if you're having a, a toe-in issue, you're going to see wear happening on the outer edge of the tire more so than anywhere. And uh, if you have a toe-out issue, you're going to have wear on the inside edge, both toe-in and toe-out. I'll go over on another slide, but that uh, they both rob performance as well. And this can also be a problem with solid tires, just because you have a solid tire doesn't mean that you still can't have a toe uh, issue alignment and uh, you still have to be aware that those are going to wear as well and uh, need to be replaced. Does it? Um, with the rear tires also, I wanted to include, you know, if you're uh, going on a trip somewhere, Take, uh, take some stuff to be proactive in case something happens. You know, having the ability to replace, uh, repair a flat tire is a really important uh, thing when you're tra traveling, excuse me, especially over uh, on a vacation somewhere. You know, a little manual air pump is easy to store in your suitcase and a pair of tire levers and a two patch kit are uh, important things to have. Waiting for the slide to advance. There we go. Uh, your rear wheels, uh, slopping the axles. You know, these are all things that you'll start to notice. Uh, something, you know, your rear wheel is maybe uh, jiggling or, you know, just not has the same connection that it had before where it doesn't feel nice and tight. Something could have come out of a alignment or adjustment. Uh, the quick release button may not be functioning properly. Uh, you, you want to make sure that button uh, is fully depressed and pops out so that you know that the wheel is locked in place. Uh, if that button doesn't pop out, it can be a sign that you, you know something 
is keeping it from popping out or it got uh, adjusted incorrectly and that can be uh, a problem as your wheel will you know can fall out of the axle itself bearings making sure they're not missing sometimes a bearing can fall out of a, a wheel i've seen that happen before um, and you also want to make sure your bearings are spinning properly you know keep keep them uh, maintained hair you know make sure you remove the hair uh, keep them oiled and uh, you know make sure there's no damage or anything in the bearings your center of gravity adjustment is, this is an important one um, the camber tube clamp you want to make sure you don't over tighten it especially if you have a carbon fiber camber tube if you're uh, tightening it so too much and you hear a crack that's not a good sound um, you want to check the alignment of the uh, the camber tube such that these flats want to be perpendicular to the ground they don't look like it in this picture because the chair is tilted forward but what happens if uh, your camber tube gets loose and rotates that's what causes the toe in and if it rotates backwards that causes the toe out on your chair and that will uh, cause you know the tire excessive tire wear uh, problems as well as performance robbing um, the bracket to the frame you want to make sure that your screws there are where we you know whatever chair you have the screws that are attaching the uh, clamp to the chair remain tight you don't want anything loose there because that's going to allow your center of gravity to move and can make your chair uh, too tippy or all of a sudden feel sluggish because it's moved the other direction and if things get excessively worn like bumpers and frame protectors and stuff they uh, those are disposable items that need to be replaced over the uh, you know several times over the life of the chair I like this picture because this is a very a, a dramatic uh, example of uh, excessive tire wear if you have this much tire wear, I hope you know that something's going on in your chair. But this is an example of how things can end up if they don't uh, get replaced. It's not something that's gonna necessarily last for the life of your chair. Your caster wheels uh, have the same sort of problems. You know, the bearings in there can get hair trapped in them. Uh, they need oil. The bearing seals could get uh, damaged. Um, especially if you go through puddles or you know and you get a lot of water or moisture it's a good thing to uh, oil your casters the, uh, the bearings in there they need it and uh, making sure nothing is loose in terms of you know if you're hearing some rattlings or some sounds down there that is what is causing uh, the oil or you know something's loose and causing the, the problems um, <laughs> My wife just showed me a picture of the oil that I use. I was gonna mention, that's why I said oil. Um, there's all sorts of good ones out there. I think uh, Bow Shield uh, T9 is one of the better uh, bearing oils out there. So um, the same thing applies with your caster forks um, in terms of keeping, making sure things are staying tight. Oh, where's my little? It's over there. It's not moving now. There we go. That's a the the fork stem screw is an important one to make sure that stays tight. Uh, a lot of times when a fork starts rattling or stuff, that has uh, started to back out and is causing some slop in the fork, and that will do nothing but get worse and worse. So you definitely want to ensure that that stays uh, tight, but not too tight, because if you over tighten it, you can damage your bearings. So it's just a a nice firm tightness but you sh your fork should still be able to spin and rotate freely frame components you know your upholstery um, the seat back and the sling are areas that can get frayed uh, from excessive wear you might have to replace them you know if your seat is uh, seat sling is sagging a lot most of them are adjustable and it's a good idea to uh, retension your seat sling just to, it's something that happens slowly over time and you start sitting lower and lower in your chair and uh, it's a good performance uh, upgrade just to tighten everything back up your foot rests uh, the angle adjustment get highlight those little yeah 
those uh, screws uh, can get loose and can let the uh, footrest slip. Uh, so you want to be able to keep keep that set at the angle that you want and make sure those stay tight. Um, frame accessories, uh, the same sort of thing. You know, side guard brackets can uh, start to get loose. The clamps can uh, start jiggling or, you know, making a rattling sound. That's a good indicator that something's not right. Wheel locks, you definitely want to keep uh, adjusted properly. Uh, the two screws are the, or the clamp of the screw or the lock. This is uh, showing an extreme example of the whole wheel lock having been rotated, but this is stuff that can happen when that is loose and uh, it, you know, just will make your wheel lock not work efficiently. So you want to always keep that. And then there's also, you know, if your chair has armrests, uh, the brackets, you know, can get loosened up. Any Anything that you're hearing rattling or uh, jiggling, it's an indicator that something needs to be adjusted or tightened. So this is a lot. Um, hopefully it's a uh, really good information, but it's, uh, it's, it's important to recognize that Medicare actually considers it reasonable to expect that the beneficiary, meaning the wheelchair user, will perform some of this routine maintenance. Um, the responsibilities of the user would be to read and um, understand the owner's manual, perform that routine maintenance, like we say, the, the tightening of the bolts, the simple, more simple stuff, uh, cleaning, uh, making sure everything is in good working order, and if you are, uh, I think we had close to 50% therapists on the um, call today as well. Um, if you're not familiar with this, get familiar. Lean on your wheelchair suppliers that you work with um, to help you so that you can educate your clients as well. Um, that we need to teach the end user, or the client, when and what to do to their chair, but also when it's appropriate to contact the supplier or the manufacturer to know um, if something is okay, if it should be replaced, um, you know, et cetera. So I did want to mention that there is an uh, excellent resource out there um, from the University of Pittsburgh. I am not affiliated with this group. I claim no authorship. I'm just sharing some good news with you today. Um, but they do have a wheelchair maintenance training program that I've put up here. Um, on the screen for you, including the link to get to the uh, wheelchair maintenance training program. Uh, my quick tip at the bottom is if you just Google the wheelchair maintenance training program, it will take you here as well. Um, so with this program, you will then, uh, you can sign in, you will uh, register yourself as either a therapist or an end user, and it will guide you through different programs. And I just noticed today actually, um, that there's also a, um, a training um, research program going on right now. So if you're interested in your wheelchair user, uh, that's a study looking at the value and benefit of online wheelchair maintenance training. So again, maybe something that you're interested in. But as you can see here, um, there is a lot of different resources that are available as a part of this training program. There's um, different videos and there's PowerPoint tools and there's um, hand, uh, handout type, like almost like flashcards, et cetera. So really a whole lot of great information if you're not already familiar with this resource that you can um, look at and, uh, and use for your clients as well. So uh, we did uh, work hard to leave some time for some questions. Uh, this is, I think, a, uh, this is Landon. Landon has a quote. I think this is very important because it's increased my independence and my self-esteem. He's specifically speaking to his um, FIVS, his standing feature in his wheelchair. But I like to think if Landon was on the line with us today, you would also think that knowing how to maintain his equipment and keep his uh, ride clean and care for it properly would also increase his independence and his self-esteem. He's a, um, a growing young man, so uh, just a little bit my tease here. Um, but we're really excited. I have a, a feeling that we have plenty of questions. Um, so Brinley, I will open it up to you. And before, well, 
I'll open it up to you. Yeah, we'll go to the next slide in a little bit. So we do have lots of questions. Um, so I'm going to try and, you know, vary the product that they're asked for. But if um, one of you can clarify, if we're not using WD-40, um, is there a suggestion for what type of lubricant would be best to use on the power chairs? So I did um, invite a couple of tech experts from the power and manual chair uh, uh, divisions to join us. And so Ryan Vickers is here with us and uh, he's happy to uh, tackle that. So the, the biggest thing to remember when you're when you're using this, if, if you have to use any kind of lubrication like that, you're going to want to use something like a, you want to stay away if at all possible from WD-40 and do go more like a, a lithium type based um, component there. Um, you just want to be careful using WD-40 because it will dry out certain components. It can. So anything lithium um, lithium based is what you're going to want to try to use. Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, Trish, can you just go back to the University of Pittsburgh slide just so some people can see the the website there while we yeah. ask another question? Okay. Um, for power chairs, um, another clarification about charging batteries, whether the batteries do need, in, in fact, to be charged every night. And the, the question also, if somebody isn't using their power chair, every day so they use a manual chair and they might not be in the power chair you know for maybe a few days or a week how should they go about charging that chair to make sure that it's still good so if they're not going to use their chair every day it's still a good rule of thumb to leave it on a charge the chargers are equipped to shut off um, after after a certain period of time so there's no threat of the charger um, messing with the chair there's also um, all of our chairs in the back um, have a circuit breaker. Um, if they're not going to be using the chair and they don't want to keep it on the charge, it's a, it's a, that's about the only option that you have. Just flip that breaker. That way you have no current running through um, the batteries. So if, if, they, if they don't want to mess with the breaker, the circuit breaker, then leaving it on a charge after eight hours, the charger itself will shut off. So there's no fear of, of overcharging. There's no fear of the batteries, you know, catching, you know, catching a spark or anything like that. So you just, the best rule of thumb is if, if you use the chair every day, charge it every night. Um, and if they're not going to use it, at least charge it um, at a minimum. If they don't even want to leave it on the charge, uh, charge it a minimum of maybe once a week. Once, once or twice a week if they they still don't feel comfortable leaving it charged. Great, thank you. Um, I just have a note from one of our other colleagues that the wheelchair maintenance um, information from University of Pittsburgh also has resources in Spanish. So just for anybody who needs to know that information. Um, Trish, I have a couple of Rojo questions for you. Um, so, and I don't know if you want to be able to answer this one quickly, um, in regards to finding and repairing holes in a rojo, uh, the yeah. process, and the second part of it, oh, I'll ask you that one first. So is there um, information somewhere, or could you give a quick idea of how to find holes and do a repair on a rojo cushion? Yeah, so if you can't see the hole, um, by just, just through visual inspection, if you do um, overinflate the cushion, put it in and then uh, dunk it in water, it should bubble. If um, you do that and you still don't find, you, if you uh, dab a little bit of soap over top of it, sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to um, see the bubbles as well. But you should be able to identify the bubble that way by, um, by putting the cushion under uh, in the water. Okay, and then every Rojo cushion, does come with a repair kit. So it has uh, patch kits and it has instructions in there. So just make sure when you do get a Rojo um, that you get your cushion, the cover, the pump and the repair kit and that will be helpful as well. Yes. All right, and here's one other question about Rojo in regards to um, disinfecting or cleaning. Do you recommend deflating the Rojo cushion prior to the cleaning or disinfecting so that the cells aren't 
closer touching each other, um, you know, when you have to dry them. That is, that's actually a really good question. I find that um, if I am wiping the cushion and I lay it over my arm, it's quite easy to um, go between. So you can imagine the cushion is draped over my uh, forearm. You can let a little bit of air out, but just the, the amount of air that the end user would have already from a properly adjusted, not overinflated cushion, if you drape it over your arm, it's quite easy to wipe between the cells. Yeah, and I'm just gonna add to that a little bit too, is that if you do deflate the cushion when you're washing it, then you have the issue of the cushion having to be reset up for the client. And in some facilities that might be a challenge um, and it might lead them to either, you know, not cleaning it as much or not setting it up correctly. So if you're able to, you might want to leave the original setup. Just make sure your valves are closed when you're put when you're uh, when you're doing the cleaning. So just just sort of look at where you're where you're dealing with. Um, okay. In regards to manual chairs, um, Doug talked a lot about uh, maintenance and looking at things. Are there any suggestions for cleaning? items like the rims, the spokes, the center hubs of the rear wheels on manual chairs. Yeah, I, you know. Did I run that one, guys? Yeah, go for it, Ken. Ken Winwards are uh, right. leading a highlight right, expert. I just want to. Uh, go ahead, Ken. Okay. Um, as far as like hand rims, especially now with, uh, you know, how we're supposed to be washing our hands more often, um, every time we touch something quite often, like our hand rims or our wheel locks or so forth, when we wash our hands, we might want to consider also maybe using some uh, disinfectant hand soap to also clean those things. I had a friend over yesterday and I worked on his chair for a little bit and it was interesting. Every time he went to go wash his hands, which was like every 30 minutes, he made sure that his hand rims and his um wheel locks were uh, were disinfected at the same time it was kind of cool to see that as he applies to what he does with his hands as far as hand rims i mean you you can tell when those hand rims if it's not a disinfectant thing if if you start getting that gritty feel or that greasy feel it's time to wipe them down and uh trish has called out a beautiful way to you know release that with just kind of a mild soap and then make sure you rinse it off um and so with that said, um, if it's your spokes, you see them, just be really careful what you use on your spokes, especially if you're talking about a PVO spoke from like Spinergy, um, you gotta be careful what you put on that. Um, mild everything is very important. Um, coming down to the hub, there's so many different ways to get in between there. Uh, just be careful if you're gonna use a brush, make sure it's a very soft bristle. Um, and uh, once again, uh, some kind of mild soap and then, uh, wipe it off instead of renting it off uh, like we talked about before we don't want to get a lot of water in certain areas and the hub is one of those areas awesome thank you so here's a here's a question that i think you sort of just answered for manual or power chairs can we use a power washer no yeah thank you all right <laughs> uh, in the um in the areas of the US and Canada and the world that has snow and salt, um, we know that salt um, wreaks havoc on our wheelchairs. Any suggestions um, on being able to manage the salt um, as it does often make screws more difficult to loosen or tighten? Yeah, you know, that's something you want to keep, uh, especially when you, I used to live by the ocean and so. I know all too well about the uh, the salt salt air and what it does to the uh, corrosion and rusting on the uh, on the hardware. It's just uh, a necessary uh, maintenance thing of keeping like a light layer of a uh, oil, like a light oil, a three in one oil or something. You know, just a nice light oil, sort of wiped over those uh, parts, and it goes a long way in keeping them from uh, getting corroded. Okay, can you repeat the name of the oil that you mentioned that you use? You said it before. Oh, so that oil is a Bow Shield, you know, B O E S H I E L D. It's uh, actually made by Boeing. It's a really uh, good wheel uh, oil. Uh, I like it for you know not only that, but for you know the the bearings. Um, it's waterproof. It's uh, you know it's just a, a really good all around oil. 
Thank you. I have another um, manual chair question in regards to casters. Do you need to completely remove the caster in order to get out, get the hair and all the gunk out or to oil it? It's, it's easier to do if you do it that way. Okay. So that's gonna be your tip or trick for getting hair off the wheels is to take the wheels off, correct? Yeah. Right. It'll it'll slide right off of the axle once you you know dis disassemble it. Could I add one more thing to that? Please. Of course. Okay. When it comes to casters up front, um, keep in mind our, our casters are um, asymmetrical. And and when you pull that hair out, that, that spacer will come out. Um, with it, and then you have to basically push the spacer out of the hair. Um, I guess it's a curl. It looks like a little, uh, uh, looks like a, a little, um, I don't even know what to call it. But it's basically just a circle of hair. Once you push that out, make sure you put it in the uh, correct side. Um, otherwise, what will happen is you'll off center your caster, and either it won't fit between your caster anymore, or you will get it so that the caster is not directly under your, your caster stem and then you run into troubles with tracking in the flutter. Okay, awesome. Yeah, the, <clears throat> our, uh, our casters have a dish to them. If you look at it, one side is recessed more than the, uh, the other, the spoke. And so the, uh, the short um, side is uh, what would be inboard when your caster is trailing in the, like you're going forward position. Awesome. Um, power chair, quick question. How often should things like power leg rests, um, back rests, um, other parts of the chair be lubricated? Is there a, is there a, um, a recommendation for that? I, I think as long as you're not hearing any kind of noises, um, anything that you don't typically hear when using your actuators, um, I think it's, you know, you're good. I think once you start hearing some, hearing the noises, I think it's a good idea to contact your provider and tell them what's going on. Maybe there's something that's changed um, that's causing that noise. Um, so yeah, there's not really a whole lot you can do. So. Okay. Um, all right. I think one more question, Trish, just in regards to the My Permobile app. Um, question is, maybe you could just reiterate um, how the app gets connected to the chair, how we activate it, and also, um, is there going to be, is it just the app right now, or are we going to have a web-based option? It's just an application, mobile application right now for the end user, and um, when you do get your chair, there is actually uh, some very simple directions on how to pair an uh activate the app through a Bluetooth connection with your phone and the wheelchair itself. So the directions are quite simple. We have a web page. If you go onto permobileus.com and you can see there is a page dedicated to my permobile. If you're interested, there's a video that you can watch. Um, and in fact, I will, uh, I am going to make a PDF uh, version of this handout and I will put the link Actually, in fact, I think I did. On the slide uh, that, that speaks about my permobile, there was a link to the web page um, for your reference. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quick and easy process. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna add one more because we didn't talk about the smart drive. Um, somebody's just asked if there's any specific um, cleaning or maintenance tips for the smart drive specifically. No, you just need to inspect the spark drive, um, clean it, you know, kind of just like you do the other parts of the wheelchair with a mild detergent on a damp cloth and rinse and dry appropriately. And just keep an eye on uh, for wear and tear. The, the rollers uh, can become damaged and need to be replaced depending on length of time and use and terrain, et cetera. So um, that is something that can be replaced in time. Um, that would that would almost, I, I would suggest contacting your service provider at that point. Um, so it's more of an inspection and um, obvious uh, cleaning and disinfecting process, just like the wheelchair. Awesome. Trish, can you go to the next slide, please? So we're at um, the end, so I just want to wrap up. Um, 
we want to thank all of you guys for attending today. We had a great turnout. And definitely thank you to Tricia and to Doug. That was fantastic. Thank you to our, um, you know, our guest question answers, um, Guy and Ken and Ryan as well. We really appreciate that. Um, before we go, just want to invite you to some of our upcoming webinars. So you can see that we've got a lot going on over the next few weeks. You can sign up on the website, um, whether the US or the Canadian site or whatever territory you're in. And reminder, emails are always coming out with registration links. We did record this webinar today. So anyone who pre-registered will automatically get a link to the webinar um, a couple of hours after this one is over. So you'll have a link to the recording. The recordings and the archived webinars are also posted in the Permobile Academy section of our websites. So you can always go back and find some of the older webinars if you'd like to listen to them. Also included in the email you're receiving is going to be a link to generate a certificate of attendance if you would like one. So it will ask you to type in your name and your email address and it'll pull up a certificate for you that you can save or print or put in your professional portfolio. Um, also, there's a, an optional survey if you'd like to share um, some feedback and any new ideas that you'd have for upcoming webinars. So the other thing we are gonna be sending in the follow-up email is a link to a Permobile um, cleaning video and a few other things. So make sure you please check your follow-up video. And if there's nothing else, anyone who we didn't get to your questions and there were still some questions, we will answer you by email. So we apologize that we didn't get to them live. So again, I'm just gonna thank everyone very, very much. Hopefully we'll see you at our um, next webinars as well as our CEUs, um, April 21st, 27th, May 6th, and May 12th. So look forward to um, talking to everybody again soon. So thank you very much. Have a great day and everyone stay safe out there.